Hello and welcome to another edition of Transforming Agriculture in Nigeria, a program brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development to evaluate the agricultural sector, monitor the progress therein and identify meaningful potentials for sustainable economic development. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. To grow the sector, science has been identified as a crucial factor. To this end, there are research institutions under the ministry all across the nation working in their own capacity to provide knowledge required by operators and policymakers to boost productivity on one hand and promote sustainable development on the other. Tonight's episode will focus on a few of these institutions to see just how well they are faring in the overall bid to transform agriculture in the country. Do sit back and anticipate a thrilling experience and I'll see you after this break. We'll begin with highlights of happenings in the diary of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. In our lineup, Nigeria's insect resistant maize variety shows promise. Also, stakeholders call for improved funding for seeds research. Details shortly. Farmers across the country can now heave a sigh of relief following ongoing experiments at the Institute for Agricultural Research in Zaria for improved maize varieties codenamed Tela Maize by the Institute. The progress was revealed during a recent invitational tour organized by the Institute for Certified Seeds Companies, Regulators and the Media at their experimentation farm in Zaria. One of the varieties showcased contained the Bacillus thuringiensis genes made up of proteins which are toxic to insects, such as the fall army worm and the stem borer. The other two experiments are the drought resistant trial and the optimum yield trial. Speaking before the tour, Executive Director of the IAR, Professor Muhammad Ishiaku, said no country can develop its agriculture without the application of science. It is highly very, very dangerous for our country for anybody who might campaign against the use of science to improve our lot as a country. There is no country in the world that has ever developed without the application and development, continuous development and application of science and technology. This new variety is a product of research into science and then a technology of genetic improvement has been developed. On his part, the Serials Research Program Leader at the Institute, Professor Rabi Adamu, explained the reasons for the experiment. This project is aimed at alleviating two major constraints that is currently developing hampering productivity of maize. I'm thinking about biotic constraint and abiotic constraint of drought. Drought limits productivity of maize and the issue of insect pests, particularly stem borers and fall army worm. For the insect resistant experiment, the improved variety was planted alongside the regular variety, with both bombarded by artificially bred insects. The results showed significant damage to the regular variety, while the improved variety maintained great health and growth. On the part of the drought-resistant variety, watering was stopped after six weeks maturity, with no further plans to water the plants again throughout the season. So. For the uh, optimum and drought, we don't want to confine the effect of stem borer and drought together in the same trial. So we treated those two trials, the last two, optimum and drought, we spray regularly. Previous experiments done on the optimum yield variety recorded a harvest of between 10 to 12 tons per hectare above the national average of 1.69 tons per hectare 
recorded in 2019. There are plans to boost that figure even further. The implication is that farmers can begin to cultivate maize even without adequate rainfall or irrigation. On the other hand, pests that often eat up almost 90% of yield will no longer be a problem. It was agreed that a second invitation will be done at full maturity when the plants start fruiting for stakeholders to also see how well the improved varieties are performing as against the regular varieties. The project is partnered by the African Agricultural Technology Foundation. At the event, where officials and representatives of the National Variety Release Committee, the National Biosafety Management Agency, the National Seeds Council, as well as several seeds companies in the country. In a related development, stakeholders in the agricultural seed sector have called on government to increase research funding towards the development of improved seeds for farmers in the country. They spoke on the sidelines of a recent visit to the Institute for Agricultural Research in Zaria to observe progress made on varietal experiments. A representative of the National Agricultural Seeds Council, E.D. Muhammad, noted that the box stops at research. Uh, most of these seeds you are seeing with the seed companies, the beginning of it is the research, do you understand? And we have research institutes like that are saddled with this responsibility of producing early generation seeds. What I mean by early generation seeds, like breeder seed and foundation seed, they are products of the research. So, and where we have it wrong most of the time is uh, inadequate, uh, inadequate uh, fund, do you understand? To research, to carry out research. You discover when you go to research institute, the problem they are facing is this inadequate research. So Other respondents observe that to boost yield, the issue of seeds must be given increased attention. The way forward for seed improvement in Nigeria is through adequate funding of research. And um, in Nigeria, it is unfortunate that research is being relegated, not adequately funded. So if I want to say the way forward is proper funding of our research. Like what we have, uh, we have witnessed today, we discovered that the drought can take about 80% from the yield. So if that is not been, uh, if we cannot get drought resistant uh, crops, then of course at the end of the day, our uh, farmers will have nothing, little or nothing to go on with. So then the, even the press can take virtually 100% from them. They urged research institutes to enhance capacity and pay attention to other areas like vegetables for which improved seeds are mostly imported. The growth of agriculture in whatever form requires the correct development and application of science and technology. This applies to all stages of a crops or livestock cycle, from land preparation, seeds production, planting, pruning, harvesting and even storage. It is only when all these are properly done that a nation can truly boast of desired yield per hectare. Our next segment, Partnership for Development, takes a look at these crucial stages of crop production and how research institutions under the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development are providing technologies to enhance and ease those processes. Please stay with us. Nigeria, along with other African nations, still falls short of the global average of production per hectare for many crops, fruits and vegetables. For instance, the country's estimated maize production hovered around 1.6 tons per hectare in 2019. By comparison, the United States has an average yield of 10 tons per hectare. For rice, the country has managed to produce between 2 and 3 tons per hectare compared to the global average of between 4 and 8 tons per hectare, depending on region. 
What makes the difference is the quality of seeds and other inputs available and farming practices, all tied to science. The relatively low yield per hectare recorded by Nigeria with most crops is a serious concern for government. At the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, there is a concerted effort to continue to empower its research institutions, especially in the area of improved seeds and seedlings. At several gatherings and engagements, the Minister Mohamed Sabu Nanuno has expressed this commitment. Is one of the most important elements. But before reaching the sea, is a search for getting the good sea. While there are several research institutions under the ministry committed to the development of improved seeds through genetic improvement, the Institute for Agricultural Research in Zaria, established in 1922, continues to make the news. Our Responsibility primarily uh, to improve commodities um, for genetic improvement such that the productivity of these crop plants, which I'm shortly going to mention, uh, their productivity will be increased and then that should translate into increased revenue by our farming community in Nigeria. Specifically, the IAR has a mandate to improve the genetic composition of major cereals, grains and legumes grown in the country to boost yield. Three major areas are considered. Production of insect resistant seeds, production of high yielding seeds and production of drought resistant seeds. We have the national mandate for the genetic improvement of sorghum. Guinecon, that is guinecon, maize, uh, beans, which is called cowpea, groundnut, cotton, sunflower, uh, artemisia, and then jathropa. Their experimentation farms and orchards reveal several field trials on sorghum with two recent varieties to tackle malnutrition and for improved malting. Maize for seeds that are insect resistant, drought resistant, and high yielding, and other important economic crops. Cotton is another experiment with so much promise. The number and the size of the bowl determine also what will be got in the yield, the final output. So you can see if you compare this with what is here, can't you, can you see the bowl size? Within the institute, Several laboratories are domiciled for experiments. These include the Crop Protection Unit, where an insect rearing laboratory is situated. The lab rears major parasitic insects like the Fall Army Worm and the Stem Borer, used to test the resistance of their varieties, especially for cereals like maize and legumes like cowpea. The reality is, such insects and pests sometimes damage farms and crops by up to 100%. Developing seeds that are resistant to such insects will greatly improve yield and productivity. Recent varietal releases with impressive feedback include the telomaze and the pod borer resistant cowpea, PBR. The Samaru cowpea, Sampi, and Samaru maize, Samaz, are all the common names. In addition to the natural infestation, we have done some artificial infestation with another stem water called Sesemia clamistis. Kelly infested its plant with 10 pairs of second insta Sesemia clamistis at three weeks after planting, when the plant was just around knee length. Then we do the second infestation seven days after. There are others like the Nigeria Institute for Oil Palm Research, NIFOR, in Benin, dedicated to the genetic improvement of oil palm seeds, among other crops. The institute is also being supported by the ministry as it goes about its mandate to produce seeds that can produce as much as 25 bunches on a tree. Getting the best out of agriculture does not end with improved seeds. So many other factors come to bear. Take mechanization, for instance. Nigeria still operates at a meager level of seven tractors per 100 square kilometers 
as against the global standard of 127 tractors per 100 square kilometers. Advanced countries like the United States have about 1,200 tractors per 100 square kilometers. To meet up with Kenya, which is one of the most agriculturally mechanized country in Africa, with 27 tractors per 100 square kilometers. The country needs 60,000 tractors to cater for her 34 million hectares of cultivated arable land. There is a plan, however, to bridge this deficit. You know, it has been going on for the last four or five years under the Green Imperative, a collaboration between Brazilian government and the Nigerian government uh, for mechanization of about 632 local governments and attached to that 140 uh, agro-processing centers. So if you add up as a program nearly 800 yes. will, be, will, be, will, will be affected. The president of, the, of this country, uh, President Muhammad Buhari, is committed to this agricultural mechanization. The executive council has given its approval for this. All the financiers, uh, the Brazilian Development Bank, the Dutch Bank in Europe, all the financials being completed. While we await the full implementation of such huge projects, the ministry is already doing a lot in the area of agricultural mechanization through the Nigeria Center for Agri-Mechanization, NCAM, in Ilorin. Established in 1974, NCAM was put in place as a realization of the importance of mechanization towards achieving food sufficiency in the country. The mandate of the institute, the major mandate is to accelerate the pace of uh, agriculture mechanization in the country. And the activities of uh, this uh, mandate are one, to research and innovate into indigenous technology, two, to fabricate and produce local technology, aquaculture technology, in uh, aquaculture technology that can reduce drudgery using local materials. Third, uh, thirdly, we are to regulate the importation of uh, aquaculture equipment to the country in collaboration with the uh, standard organization of Nigeria. And in doing so, all machinery that are supposed to be imported are supposed to be brought to income to test to certify it and then confirm its suitability, their suitability in the Nigerian agro-ecosystem. Three major activities carried out at NCAM are training, land development and fabrication. From diggers, regers and planters to spraying equipment and harvesters, the impact of NCAM is felt far and near. They were filled equipment. For example, this field, field equipment is uh, the mini tractor. We have, I've told you before that we produce a, tree, a tricycle, a tractor from tricycle, which is about 30 horsepower. We have also produced a 40 horsepower mini tractor. We have a, a mini planter that a small farmer can use, a small holder farmer can use. We have produced those also. We are also trying to produce a transplanter, rice transplanter. It's on, 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 in progress now. Very soon we will go to the field to test so that we are produ we are produced where it's on the way. So we have produced many equipment and uh, all these equipment have been helping farmers. It is one thing to plant and another to harvest, but having the right storage facility for crops and vegetables is a necessity. It is on record that post harvest loss in Nigeria rises from about twenty to thirty percent in grains to thirty to fifty percent in roots and tubers and almost 70% in fruits and vegetables. The ministry also has an institute with a mandate to check this challenge. At the National Stored Products Research Institute and SPRI, nothing is left to chance. The demand of government on the institute is in line with the diversification of the economy using agriculture and post harvest being Post-harvest management being a, a, an important sector in the agricultural system and NISPRI being the only research institute that has a mandate to conduct to handle post-harvest issues, it has brought a great responsibility on the institute. 
Well, we conduct basic research. We also conduct applied research. Applied research in the sense that our stakeholders come with uh, issues, problems, and so we talk about demand-driven research. So we conduct research on that such situations to provide, to offer, offer solutions to their problems. From yams and other tuber crops to grains and fruits, farmers can now use such local, easily distributed and replicative technologies to reduce losses significantly. The institute established in 1948 has proved itself one of the cardinal centers of excellence crucial to the development of agriculture in Nigeria. With sustained vigor and support from government, as well as the willingness by these research institutes to boost capacity, produce knowledge and technologies, and get such knowledge and technologies across the farmers, the country can indeed begin to look at better days ahead for agriculture. If there is anything we cannot deny, it is the renewed focus and attention the current administration is giving to agriculture, with policies seeking to once again make Nigeria self-sufficient in food. It is important to back such policies with science so that we can get the most from our efforts. In our next segment, Farmers Speak, one farmer has a few things to say about his business. Okay, the business is very, very good. Okay. The business sustained me. All my children, I feed them with what I get from the farm. There's no month, even by, by right now, that we don't have enough fruit. There's no month I cannot produce up to 2,000 liters of oil every month. I cannot. That is the minimum. Right now, I'm planting. I have about uh, 10 hectares of palm. What is your dream? Uh, I'm thinking of getting up to 100,000 <laughs> hectares. Mm, hectares so that I live in, the, in my plantation. Potatoes are tubers that are edible, economical to cultivate and rich in nutrients. The availability of potato extends worldwide and all year long. Presently, there are over 5,000 types of potatoes. Potato is a low-carb food with fiber, vitamin, mineral and phytochemicals that prevent certain diseases and provide numerous health benefits such as bone strength, blood pressure regulation, heart health, treatment of inflammation, and prevention of cancer, among others. Potatoes were first domesticated by the indigenous people of America and later introduced to Europe by the Spaniards. In 2018, the world production of potato was estimated at 368 million tons. China is currently the largest producer of potato. Other major producers include India, Russia, Ukraine, and the United States. Nigeria is the seventh largest potato producing country in Africa. With a large scale cultivation in the north, central, and northwestern regions of the country, the country's largest producing area is Plato State. Annual production is currently estimated at 843,000 tons with an actual cultivated area of 270,000 hectares. The sweet potato and the Irish potato are the two most common species in Nigeria in terms of consumption. The potato farming system in Nigeria is mostly non-mechanized, which involves the use of machetes and hoes and occurs in small farms. It's been an exciting journey, I'm sure.
but it's also one that reminds us there's still a long way to go and so much more work to do to get Nigeria where it should be using agriculture. And with that, we've come to the end of this episode. We do hope you'll join us same time next week for another interesting package. Ensure you take the little steps to protect yourself and your loved ones from COVID. As they say, a healthy nation is a wealthy nation. Have a good night.